everyone and welcome to a resin video. This one is not going to be quick so I don't blame you if you don't make it all the way through. Um, I have sped up a lot of sections so there's not going to be any audio from the actual video. Um, I start off with just cleaning the molds with some double-sided tape just to get any dust or anything out of them um, and then I put in some little uh, nibs for diamond painting. I'm turning these pen molds into diamond painting pens. Well, hopefully that was the plan. Um, and then I just sort of sort out which molds I think I'm going to use and which colors and which glitters. Um, I have muted the audio from the original video because like I said, in a lot of parts it's sped up and in other parts, even when it's not sped up, I do have an extractor fan on and I am wearing a mask. So you can't really hear very much of what I'm saying. My husband is also helping me in this video. Um, but yeah, so basically started off, I decided to do a layout and kind of see how the designs I wanted to do in the coasters would look and what kind of things I wanted to put in. Um, this was my very first time doing a resin pour and I made a lot of mistakes. My friends, this is not a tutorial in any way, shape or form, unless it's like a what not to do. No, I did a few things right, but I did a lot of things wrong and it was very much just like a learning experience for me um, and just having fun with it. So like I said, uh, lots of experimenting and just deciding what things I should put in and I learned stuff like some stuff floats, some stuff sinks, um, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah. Okay, so then I start with the mixing. I skipped out the pouring because I kind of poured it over my sink and not on this um, screen, so you couldn't really see. And it was I, I poured so badly. Um, in hindsight, with any future pours, I have actually done a few pours after making this video. I mixed all of the um, color in one larger container. I ordered a larger silicone container. I mixed it all together and then I poured it out into separate. I would highly recommend doing that. The stuff is very, I found it very difficult to pour. It might be the brand I'm using, but I found it very difficult to pour. And so, uh, yeah, I just had problems. Then we go on to the inks. I didn't realize that they come sealed, which is kind of dumb. Of course they come sealed. Um, and you need a pin to kind of prick them open. Um, I would recommend doing this before you start mixing. Like if you're going to be using resin, like go choose your dyes you're using beforehand. And when you're not under time pressure and you're not, you don't have like all the gloves and everything on, just open them up. I also in future when I open more, what I did is I kind of wrapped a tissue around the spout so that when I pulled the pin out, any excess that came out like went into the tissue and not onto my gloves or my hands um, because these were obviously created and packaged in a lower pressure environment in which than I am and so when I kind of really opened took the pin out like some spurted out because of the pressure release so that's something I would recommend doing um, but yeah so I just added I think I also added quite not a lot of drops so I probably could have got a stronger color if I had added more drops but I was a little bit worried about diluting the mixture and everything but I, I think it turned out good in the end so I did pink blue and purple a white one um, and I left one clear for doing some other things with it um, so yeah but like I said um, mixing I, another thing I would suggest is getting like a timer I have now bought like a little desk timer that I just put on my windowsill so I can watch the time and it's easier to figure out what you're doing but if you mix it all at once in one big thing you don't have to have like five different timers going at once <laughs> so yeah that was a mistake I made um, but I, I've sped up this pour, this mixing and cut out a lot of sections because this took a long time um, and I was quite stressed about it Uh, next, I 
started pouring and I poured a base for the coasters. Um, this is somewhere else where I had made a bit of a mistake. Um, I, you can see I start struggling with bubbles at some point and I have since bought a reptile mat heater thing for that is safe to leave on and it doesn't heat up too hot and I put that underneath the silicone mat and that keeps everything warm and helps a lot with bubbles. Um, and it just keeps everything more, um, uh, fluid and everything so that is something I've since done but in this video I didn't have that um, and so I did these little pours so far I haven't done too badly <laughs> um, I was waiting for those to kind of self level out so I started mixing some glitter into what was rest left of the clear resin um, because I wanted to have I just the only clear resin I was really using was for the base of the coasters um, and so I mixed that up and then went, while I left that to settle a bit more, um, I started working on the coasters. So you can hear, see here I'm really struggling with the bubbles. I tried the torch method, I tried using a, like a skewer to poke the bubbles out or whatever. I have not had any of these issues since um, I've started using a heat mat. Because also this room that I'm working in, it's nice because it's got an extractor fan, but it's also not nice because it's cold. So I, yeah, I would recommend if you're in a colder place using a heat mat. Um, so here I'm just busy placing down my pieces. Um, and this was not too bad. Um, I did get some bubbles trapped under that sticker. I think I should have like put it down on a more curving motion. Um, but something I have since learned is that when you do like a thin pour like this and put in your base pieces, for me it's better to um, actually let that dry. I leave it for 12 hours to cure and then I go do another pour over it because um, what I found is that different pieces float, different pieces sink and if you don't let them cure like they are here, you will, well I found with my pieces they landed up um, shifting and they weren't in the layers that I wanted them to be so some of the color that I added later kind of went under the sticker that was supposed to be over it and all that sort of thing so um, yeah that was just something I have since learned but that was the whole point of this first pour for me was to learn things. Um, so I was just using some little tweezers to place things down because when you're wearing gloves I find I'm not as dexterous um, and then yeah I just placed all these pieces. Here you can see I'm already pouring over uh, my next layer or the behind layer of colors and stuff and that's something which I've discovered um, at least for me doesn't work so well I, I find it better to leave that previous layer to cure um, and then you can pour stuff over it once it's solidified and it's not going to move anywhere um, but yeah hindsight is 2020 and like I said that was the point of doing this whole thing was to learn a bit and experiment and have fun and honestly the end pieces I think turned out really nicely regardless of any mistakes I made um, I still really like them so that was uh, what happened the rest of the video is just me busy doing the more colorful pours and pouring things um, and so I'm just going to leave you with some music to <laughs> watch. I mean if you've gotten this far in the video well done because it's a long video and I haven't sped things up. The reason I didn't speed things up is because a lot of what I did when I watched other people video, uh, other people's videos is I was like kind of watching them to try and learn what I should be doing and what I shouldn't be doing and people speed things up and kind of um, 
pop through stages and so you don't realize when they've left stuff to cure or even how slowly they're actually pouring and so when i tried to do it myself like for example i was saying that i should have left those coasters to have the bottom layer cure and then do another pour over it like i didn't realize people were doing that because people chop videos down to like 60 seconds so they can fit in a reel or a tiktok or whatever um and then you don't realize like that you should have actually waited for stuff so that's why i decided not to speed up anything so you could just watch what was happening um in real time other than the stirring of course because that took forever